Welcome to Archetypes. I'm Lee Woodruff, and I'm here with Susan Spungen, who is cookbook author, cook, and very in-demand food stylist. And you also worked at Martha Stewart. You really started the whole food editor page and foodie stuff. You were part That's of the foodie true. movement. That's true. That's true. I've been <laughs> called the queen of food. <laughs> I think so many people out there, we all hear the term food stylist, and we think we know what it means, and it sounds like one of those things we're supposed to know. Describe for us, what exactly is a food stylist? Basically, it's to make food look good on camera. <laughs> so it can, um, it can involve trickery and artifice, or very little at all. People have heard the stories about um, lacquering turkeys, and that's right. all they, they think everything is artificial or that the food is even plastic, and that's, you know, so it couldn't be further from the truth. There are certain tricks that, that people use. I use them as little as possible, um, but, you know, occasionally, you know, you might scotch guard a pancake or something to mm -hmm. keep the syrup from soaking in. But right. because of truth in advertising laws, you have to use the real product, and you just have to manipulate it. and keep it looking fresh and there's all kinds of little tricks and ways of doing that. But when you're just doing it in a magazine, those are mostly just real dishes that are just photographed quickly. Ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> How did this all start for you? Where did the food thing come from? I actually thought I was going to be an artist. I went to art school for fine arts, printmaking, painting, drawing. But all along the way, I was cooking and working in restaurants and this was something that I also enjoyed. And eventually I realized that I didn't wasn't cut out to be a starving artist. The, the food thing kind of took over and I began to say, well, let me make, try to make a career out of this. And then I think it was, it was quite a long time ago, I saw an article in the New York Times and it was about food stylists, which weren't very well known at that time. And I thought, you know, this is it. This is the career for me. And it never even occurred to me, who made all these beautiful images you saw in books right. and magazines? It never occurred to me. They're just sort me. of there, glistening. Never occurred to me, even though I worked sort of in a Huh. part of the field. Actually, what it led me to was becoming the food editor at Martha Stewart Living. Which is a huge job. And food styling was part of that in the beginning. And the rest was history. Well, yeah, the rest was history. I feel like for a lot of chefs, cooks, foodies I know, they developed that interest in it from watching a mom or a dad in the kitchen. Was that true for you, or did you just, as you described, you just knew this is what you always kind of had this yearning to be creating? Well, my mother did cook, but it's actually not the typical story. My mother actually had a career, so I was a latchkey child, and so I had to cook for my family. Wow. <laughs> so it was actually kind of the obvious opposite of what a lot of people say. I just sort of jumped in because I had to. Mm -hmm. My mother would sort of half prepare the meals, and she'd say, well, do this and that. She'd leave me a little list and, you know, brown the meat and do this and that and then you know so dinner can be ready when I get home from work. Wow. It wasn't that much Why work. Why not think of that with my kids? <laughs> but honestly I think what that did mostly was um, aside from keeping me from do doing my homework was um, just made me comfortable mm -hmm. with food. As a chef mm -hmm. where are you how are you inspired? Where do you get your ideas? Well I mean I think I, I always have my ears my eyes and my mouth <laughs> open. So I see things, I taste things, I smell things, and then I just start thinking about it. And often I start at the end. I think, what okay. do I want to eat? What do I, what is this? I imagine the, the dish. You have to imagine and picture and visualize what you want to end up with. And then you just have to figure out how to get there. And you are coming out <laughs> with what's a hostess to do. So we have the galley copy here. The real copy is going to look mm -hmm. much, much fancier. Yeah. This is more of a book of, of tips and advice and ideas for people who want to entertain at home. To really make it easy, right? Yes. It doesn't have to be a daunting job to have a, uh, a party or just invite people over. And you don't so. have to be perfect. I mean, you, you don't. It's the anti-perfect <laughs> yes. book. Thank you so much for being here, Susan Spungen. And the book is What's a Hostess to Do? And We're Archetypes, and we'll be back. Thanks for watching.